Hey, 42 here. If, like me, you're a fan of random interesting facts, then you probably already know that the blue whale is the biggest animal on the planet. You may also know that the blue whale isn't just the biggest animal alive today. So far as we know, it's the biggest creature that ever lived. But unless you're an especially obsessive fact collector like me, you may not realise just how utterly, absurdly, rule-breakingly gigantic these animals truly are. This graphic shows the heaviest creatures that have ever lived. There's some debate about the exact weights of many of the contenders, especially those that have been extinct for millions of years. But, broadly speaking, this Hall of Fame contains the most colossal creatures ever to have walked or swum the Earth. We know the blue whale tops this list. But where exactly do you think it fits on the graphic? Here, maybe? Or here, perhaps? Well, actually, that's not even close. Because the blue whale isn't just the heaviest animal that ever lived. Remarkably, it's roughly double the weight of any other animal in history. Just think about that for a moment. Scientists estimate that tens of billions of individual species have existed since life first appeared on Earth. And the biggest of them all isn't just slightly ahead of the rest, it's twice the size of any other. So what's going on here? Why is the blue whale such a ridiculous anomaly? Until surprisingly recently, scientists had absolutely no idea. The blue whale's immense size was a genuine mystery. Why is the blue whale twice the size of any other animal that ever lived? You know, I consider myself to be a pretty healthy eater, but I'm also incredibly busy, like all of the time. So recently I've been trying out AG1, to see if I can plug some of those nutritional gaps in my weekly diet. And that's because AG1 is the daily health drink that combines your multivitamin, pre and probiotics to support your gut health and antioxidants into one simple green scoop. It's quite simply one of the easiest things you can do to support your body every day. AG1 has been especially important for me at this time of the year, as the holidays come and temptation is all around, my diet turns more carbohydrate and sweet snack heavy. So drinking AG1 every morning during the winter period has really lifted me up. I've noticed that I have fewer cravings, I feel energized, and I've been able to bounce back from stress. AG1 Next Gen contains an enhanced B-complex to support energy without the afternoon crash. I drink my AG1 first thing in the morning, right before I eat my breakfast and have my morning coffee. It literally takes a couple of minutes and it gives me so much confidence knowing that my immune system and overall health is supported at this time of year. Go to drinkag1.com 42 or scan the QR code on screen to claim your free welcome kit. You'll get a bottle of vitamins D3 K2, a shaker bottle and a sample pack of all three new AG1 flavors. Don't miss out and a big thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video. Chances are you've seen footage of blue whales in the wild, but as you may have noticed, those pesky whales live in the ocean. And in the vast majority of footage we've seen, there's nothing else in the frame to help contextualise their gigantic dimensions. So here are a few blue whale vital statistics to help put things into perspective for you. The largest blue whale ever recorded was a so big it sounds made up, 33 meters long, that's about the length of three London buses in a traffic jam, or the height of an 11 story building. As for weight, well, unsurprisingly, nobody's ever managed to coax a fully grown blue whale onto the bathroom scales. But upper estimates suggest the heaviest of them may weigh in at about 250 tonnes. That's the weight of the Statue of Liberty. A blue whale's heart is the size of a small car. Its tongue weighs as much as 50 adult humans. Its largest arteries are wide enough for a child to crawl through. And at about 3 metres in length, its penis is bigger than you are. I'm reliably informed that size doesn't matter. But you've got to admit, that's still pretty impressive. 
Blue whales also produce one of the loudest sounds in the entire animal kingdom, measured at around 190 decibels. The blue whale's song is louder than the engines of a jumbo jet and can be heard more than 1,500 kilometers away. Blue whales are so huge they're borderline suspicious. A blatantly ridiculous glitch left behind by whatever game developer coded our universe just to see if we'd notice. But for the sake of this video, let's assume that blue whales are actually real. If that is the case, we need to answer the 250 ton question. Why the hell are they so absurdly gigantic? Hold on to your hats, because to answer that properly, we're going to have to travel back in time 50 million years to what today would be Pakistan. That's when, and where, we might meet this little guy. Its name is Pachycasus, and it was a small hoofed quadruped about the size of a wolf that spent most of its time skulking along riverbanks. If you're wondering why I've blown our time travel budget to show you this wolf deer hippo, allow me to explain. Pachycasus is a whale. Don't worry, I haven't started smoking tea leaves again. Pachycasus was the first the great granddaddy of all whale species alive today. Over 10 million years or so, Pachycasus's descendants became increasingly aquatic, and by about 40 million years ago, whales were fully committed to the ocean. A few million years after that, their lineage split clean in two. On one side were the toothed whales, fearsome predators that hunted the depths using echolocation. On the other side were the baleen whales. They swapped big pointy teeth with baleen. Baleen is the special structure of horny plates in their mouths, which enables them to strain their food from water. Okay, this is oversimplifying things a bit, but you can think of toothed whales as being a bit like traditional fishermen, going out with a rod and catching one fish or squid at a time. Baleen whales, on the other hand, are more like modern industrial trawler boats. Their mouths are vast nets that can devour entire schools of fish and other prey in one big gulp. Fast forward to about 10 million years ago, and a new lineage of baleen whales appeared. Rorqual whales had a few key adaptations that other baleen whales lacked. Their jaws were loosely hinged and could open extremely wide, and their bodies were lined with long skin folds that allowed them to massively inflate their throats, Kirby style. Combined, these weird adaptations unlocked an entire new skill tree in the whale RPG. Lunge feeding. They would sprint at swarms of fish or other prey, then open their jaws like a trap door and engulf a volume of water roughly equal to their own body mass in a single gulp before filtering out the food with their baleen plates. Lunge feeding opened up a whole new menu to the Rorquils, allowing them not only to hoover up plankton and cope pods, but to actively hunt faster moving prey like fish and krill. Nobody knew it at the time, mostly because nobody was alive at the time, but with the development of lunge feeding, Rorquils had all the tools they needed to become the undisputed heavyweight champions of the earth. But it didn't happen right away. Rorquils only became truly gigantic about 5 million years ago. And here's the strange part. This sudden gigantism seems to have affected all Rorqual species simultaneously and over an incredibly short space of time. For a long time, this had scientists stumped. The Rorquals were a diverse bunch with different behaviours and feeding habits. So what could possibly have happened 5 million years ago that caused all of them to balloon in size all at once? When strong winds sweep along a coastline, they don't just pull the surface water along with them. Thanks to the Coriolis effect, Earth's rotation deflects the water perpendicular to the coast, carrying it out to sea. That surface water has to be replaced, so cold, nutrient-packed water 
is pulled up from the depths. That, in a nutshell, is oceanic upwelling. And about 5 million years ago, thanks to a variety of changes in Earth's geology and climate, it intensified significantly. Upwelling was an absolute game changer, especially if you happened to be a gigantic rorqual whale with a mouth full of baleen. All those nutrients surging up to the surface created vast phytoplankton blooms, which in turn fed huge swarms of basically everything. Copepods and krill ate the plankton. Shoals of fish like sardines and anchovies ate the krill and the copepods. And bigger predators hunted the fish. From an evolutionary perspective, the rorqual whales found themselves in the perfect place at the perfect time. Because with giant swarms of fish and zooplankton suddenly appearing across the globe, lunge feeding became ridiculously OP. So there you have it. The rorqual whales got so big because they evolved lunge feeding, and then through sheer luck, ocean conditions became absolutely perfect for lunge feeders. But that only explains why rorqual whales in general got so big. It doesn't tell us why one particular rorqual, the blue whale, is twice the size of any other animal that ever lived. There is a missing piece to this grand puzzle, one that, ironically enough, is almost laughably small. Rorqual whales all feed in the same way. But each species has leaned into a slightly different diet. Humpbacks chase schools of fish. Say whales target copepods. Fin whales hedge their bets by eating a variety of fish and small crustaceans. But the blue whale, it eats krill and almost nothing else. They say you are what you eat, but when it comes to the blue whale, that couldn't be any less true. Krill are tiny. But it turns out those thumb-sized crustaceans are pound for pound, or more specifically, mouthful for mouthful, the most energy-dense food source in all the seven seas. Krill gather together in almost unimaginably vast swarms. And these swarms aren't just huge, they're also incredibly dense, with as many as 30,000 individual animals per cubic meter. So the animation is showing us a three-dimensional representation of a large krill swarm that we passed over earlier in the voyage. The swarm is about 400 meters long by about 200 meters across, and it kind of came up into this multi-level swarm that was total depth range was about 100 meters. Enough to fill 36 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. With so much prey packed so tightly together, lunge feeding becomes incredibly efficient. In a single mighty mouthful, a blue whale can swallow half a ton of krill. That's about as much as you would eat in a year. But that isn't the only reason krill have pushed blue whales to grow so huge. Krill are a super abundant food source, but they aren't always readily available. Their populations explode in cold, nutrient-rich waters during the summer, then pretty much vanish as winter sets in. For blue whales, that necessitates a feast or famine lifestyle. They gorge for months whilst the krill are blooming, then migrate thousands of kilometers to warmer waters to breed and give birth. During that time, they can go several months with little to no food, surviving on the fat reserves they built up during the feeding season. This creates another evolutionary incentive to get bigger. Not just because big mouths make lunge feeding more efficient, but because big bodies can store lots of energy to help endure long migrations. Evolution presented the blue whale with 99 problems, and the solution to every single one of them was to get swole. The result was simple, a biological behemoth beyond compare, the biggest animal that ever lived. This kind of hyper-specialization is a classic put all your eggs in one basket kind of deal. If anything ever happens to the krill, blue whales are absolutely f And guess what? Things are happening to the krill. Climate change, fishing, human industry, and pollution are all threatening krill numbers. The planet is literally changing so fast around the krill. And what the fundamental change is, is this increase in carbon dioxide. Because when it dissolves in water, it reacts to form carbonic acid. And it turns out that the eggs of krill are vulnerable to ocean acidification. 
putting the blue whale's future under serious threat. These magnificent beasts are already endangered. Industrial scale whaling in the 20th century wiped out around 99% of the species, reducing a global population of more than 300,000 animals to just a few thousand. Since hunting blue whales was banned in 1966, those numbers have improved, but only slightly. Most of us naturally assume that the age of giants ended with the dinosaurs. But the truth is, the biggest creature of them all is still very much alive and swimming. Blue whales came within a hair's breadth of vanishing forever. But somehow, they're still here. Whether or not they stick around depends almost entirely on us. Thanks for watching.